Let's give our new render a sense of scale. One of the most important things to do when you're starting out trying to make a sense of scale for your render is to make sure that your objects are scaled towards real world proportion. Now, this is a process that you should follow with any render, but it's very important when you're going for a sense of scale. Uh, the primary reason is because Blender's Path Tracer reacts to light based on the object size. So if your object is scaled too small, it'll react to light in a way that uh, doesn't really make much sense. I usually have a dude in my asset browser that I can just drag and drop into any scene and I'll build my entire scene based on this guy's scale. So as you can see, when we put our guy next to the ship, you can see that there is a giant difference when it comes to scale. Now, the way that you actually render something when you're trying to sell something as being very large matters a lot in selling the scale. What I mean by this is your camera makes a huge difference. For example, the camera with the default setting of 50 millimeter focal length looks like this. It doesn't necessarily look bad, but it doesn't look great. Now, you may be tempted to drop your focal length to a lower number. Uh, 35 millimeters is generally what's used in film, but as you keep on going down, you'll notice that uh, the object seems to get smaller and smaller. Now, this is a stylistic choice. Obviously, it can be used to make something look larger, but dropping the focal length for the most part generally tends to make smaller objects look larger, not make larger objects look larger. The best way to make a larger object look larger is to crank your focal length. With the default focal length, this looks decently large, but if we crank this up to 100, it makes it look significantly larger. Really, all that's happening is that the foreground and the background are being squashed significantly by the focal length going up. So if I change this even more, you can see that my foreground and my background look like they are right next to each other. Now, while it sounds counterintuitive, this generally makes things look very large scale. If you think of a shot like Dune with the, the sandworm and they're in the ornithopter and it's looking down, it's super huge scale and the sandworm, it looks right behind the ornithopter. Same thing with, say, Gandalf riding up to Minas Tirith. Minas Tirith looks very, very close, but it's just because the focal length is really, really large, making everything appear close and just showing how grand and epic the scale is of this object. So as you can see, if we position our camera nicely and we get everything in the frame, it looks pretty big. As I mentioned before with the shot from Dune or the shot from Lord of the Rings, for example, it helps that there's a person in frame. And the reason for this is because we know roughly how big people are. In this shot, for example, there's nothing really grounding the scale. There's no scale size to the boat. We can't really place it. There's no scale size to the mountain. Mountains vary drastically in size. But if we throw a person into the mix, then we can get a big sense of how large this object is, especially if we place our character closer to the boat. Then we have an enormous scale reference showing that this person is a lot smaller than this boat. Now, in some scenes, you might not be able to use a character as a scale reference. It just doesn't work out sometimes. For example, in this scene, I'm more picturing a desolate, isolated area where people aren't really around. So sometimes you might have to use some other world objects. For example, this ladder helps scale things because most people know about the distance between ladder rungs. Another option is to set up something like railings. Most people know that a railing is about a chest height or lower to the average human being. So having a railing helps scale this boat in a way that makes it look a lot larger. As you can see, when we have a character reference with a subject or a background that is very large and we use a very, very high focal length, it really helps to sell the idea that this object in the background is huge. Now, another trick that works really well and is so simple is keeping your very large object partially out of frame. A lot of times in 3D, we generally spend it. We generally tend to spend a lot of time working on an object. So when it comes to rendering, we want to show the entire thing in all of its glory. This kind of goes against making a large object look large because if everything's in camera, you just get the sense that it's a lot smaller than it is. But if you have an object that requires a full camera move, either a dolly or a pan, in order to be fully seen and realized, then it just really sells the idea that this object is enormous. Once again, you can look at something like Minas Tirith for this. The mountains in Minas Tirith and even the top of Minas Tirith isn't even fully in view to show how large the scale of the city is. 
Now, one trick that you might not have even noticed yet is using light blockers. Now, light blockers are a very common technique to make any render just look better in general, but they also tend to make objects look larger and scenes look larger because you can add a lot of depth with them. They're really easy to make. All you need is a plane and you can just add that in, scale it up to a very large surface area, and then you just block whatever light you want with it. Now, it is important to give this a material. Usually you'll have to make it black, and usually you'll have to turn up the roughness, otherwise it's gonna bounce light around. And if we position this in the right spot, wherever we want, it will block the light that is coming and hitting that area. Now, of course, it is important to position everything well. Ideally, you want your subject in light and your background and foreground a little bit darker. But as always, there's exceptions to the rules. Sometimes you might want your foreground extremely dark and silhouetted, and your background you might want extremely bright. But either way, this can add a lot of depth to your scene and just make things look nicer overall. Now, a minor one I didn't really mention is to use depth of field subtly. Sometimes you might be tempted to crank your depth of field up really high and basically just get rid of any sort of detail in your background and in your foreground. This actually goes against making things look larger. It generally tends to make things look miniature. If you've ever filmed something very small with a camera or even just your phone, you'll notice that small objects tend to get out of focus very, very quickly as you get closer to them. So essentially, if we overdo this f-stop and turn it down too low, it'll bring objects out of focus too quickly to the point where they won't look large anymore. They'll actually look like miniature objects. So it's important that you keep this effect subtle so that you don't drown out your background or your foreground entirely, making your main object look like it's in a miniature zone, which makes sure that your main object, which makes sure that your focus object doesn't look like it's a miniature. If there's any other tips and tricks that I missed, let me know in the comments. And if you want to see how I made this boat, then go over to my Patreon. I'll have a tutorial on how I built this. Check the description and subscribe so you don't miss more tutorials.